opportunity to share information and most importantly your ideas about five hot topics. <laughs> Becoming an area governor, brainstorming strategies for club membership retention, Toastmasters team building tips, becoming the next TLI Dean, and taking advantage of the, net, of the club ambassador program. So you'll see that there's a number on each table. Start here with number one, two, three, four, and five. So the table that you're sitting at now is your first round table, and you can consider the people that you're sitting with as your round table team members for this event. We're going to move together as a group. Each team will have six minutes to have a brief discussion with your table hosts. And when the six minutes are over, we'll give you a signal, and you'll have two minutes to move to the next table. So as you can see, our space is a little bit tight. So we want to ask that you move in order of the table that you're in. So table number one will go to two, two goes to three, five comes around to one. And if you can, as a bonus, maybe push in your chair so that people can have a little more space to move around that would be great. And this will continue until all of you have had the opportunity to discuss all five topics. And just quickly, our housekeeping items, if your phone is on, if you can turn it off, please. And there are sign-in sheets on each table. If you would take a moment to sign in when you're at your first table so all the sign-in sheets get filled. And third, as I already mentioned, because the space is tight, we just want to make sure that you move safely from one table to the next. To the next. No need to rush, but just want to make sure that everybody, nobody slips, the floor is a little bit slippery. Just make sure you're safe as you move from one table to another. We'll have evaluation sheets at the end. It would be so helpful to the organizers for you to fill out an evaluation. And finally, we want to ask that you feel free to express your opinions and ask your questions so that you can get the most input possible. So I would now like to introduce the creator of this event and our event moderator. She's a member of two clubs, Red Hot Toastmasters and Speaking of Leaders, where she's the VP of Education. And she's also Area Governor for Area B12 in the Central South Division. So as you can tell, she's a very busy Toastmaster. I've had the opportunity to see her speak many times, and she's very energetic and dedicated Please join me in welcoming Michelle Miller. to go to our next level 
and our personal and professional growth that's right at the table with you right now, that's right in this room, that's right in this hotel, but we don't necessarily have the time or take the time to tap into those resources. Now here's the issue, if you're a person like me that's constantly on the go and I don't necessarily want to discourse with you for half an hour about that issue, I want to get to my points, I want to talk about my issues and move on because I want to maximize my time. This is what you'll have an opportunity to do today. You have an opportunity to speak with some of our district leaders on the topics that my wonderful and beautiful facilitator mentioned earlier. So I just want to take a time to introduce our table host, and if you guys can stand, I am not going to go through their bios because we are crunched for time. We lost about 10 minutes that's very critical for this event. Each and every one of you and whoever you're around, you know, look around, look in the face, greet them, get to know their names, you will be traveling with them to all of the tables. Why? We want to build an opportunity where we collaborate, communicate, and also learn together. It's very important. We also want to make sure that we take time to listen to another person's way of doing another perspective. Ask those questions. You know the person next to you in your group may have the answer. Maybe it's the host. But I want to encourage you as far as this program is concerned is to be open communicators, ask questions, and engage in conversations and get to know new people. It's very important that we do that. Some of us will be traveling around to help moderate the discussions and take notes. That's because we just want things to move forward. You will have six minutes at each table, as you mentioned. And initially, we were going to have two minutes for you all to move from table to table, but we lost time. So I'm going to give you guys about one. And I think you can move to the next table in a minute, but we want to make sure that you get around. So for our table number one, which is to my left, the table host is Ken Blen. Ken, if you can stand, please. Thank you very much. And all the short, when I say short, very short bio, these are some dynamic people. I mean, I probably could get a page on each one of them. Our table number two is becoming a great area governor. And our table host is Marlene Berger. Our table host will remain in the same place you guys will be rotating. They get to be like, you guys can exercise. <laughs> <laughs> table number three is Toastmaster Team Building Tips. And our table host is Brent Anderson. Brent, you can stand away to the people. Thank you. Table number four is Brainstorming Strategies for Membership Retention. I forgot about that title. Yellow will be
be four minutes. Red will be six minutes. Then we're done. I will sound a little chiming bell on my phone, and then you'll have a minute to switch to the next table. Once I see everyone seated, we're going to move forward because our table host is really facilitating the flow. Thanks again, and have fun. So, if you're ready, we are now setting the time. There is a little clock, that you can see it here, that will show the right time for each round. Oh. And I can be the van of white if I need to make sure that I display this sometimes. And we are going to officially start our first round Open, open discussion. The, great, the greatest single way to retain membership is to prevent the bloviation of overblown DPMs. <laughs> okay, Tim, Tim we, we would like for you not to interrupt us. We only have six minutes. Go ahead. Yeah. Right. Good. So I ask, what's, what's the single most effective tip for retaining membership? Quality meetings and making sure that you Well, what it is is, is the amount of people we lose. Yeah, it's about what we add. So, so maybe a little So, what we're adding all those people. But it's a shame we're losing all those people. The reason I'm asking is because that makes it Which 
you know, if you help me out on this team, not only do you get the benefit of, of helping out, of working, but you can also get credit towards, or Toastmasters credit to that activity. So I, I try to tie that together. And then the, the third point is to ask people personally to sit. Uh, generally, if you just do a general call asking for volunteers, you may get the one or two people to volunteer, but for the most part, you, you don't. So if you ask people personally, you give them a specific role that you have in mind, and then you can talk about it, because if they, if they understand what you're asking them to do, they're much more likely to accept that. So at this point, I, I'd open it up if you have questions, if discussion points, other things that you found helpful in building to be your experience. What I found is because I've been with my club for five and a half years, and I've seen part of being part of it and from afar in terms of the officers, the leadership thing, that when people are not pulling for each other or not working as a team, how disorganized and it carries over into the, into the club. But I've been on those that we all really when we all have our roles, we all have everybody's role. Right. We all everybody's membership, everybody is this, even though know, and so that makes it just a big difference in terms of having it so that we're we're in a sense where we have our expertise in a sense, but we're also like general. Right. Yeah. My, my problem in our club is we have a lot of members, but we don't have a lot of people really helping out. I think everybody wants to, everybody puts the club kind of on autopilot, or they just just show up to be entertained. Right? Yeah. But when you ask people to really help, it's really just the same for people. And I've asked people to personally serve. I mean, I, I, I agree with you. You definitely better results in emails, right, yeah. but uh, but even that's that's a, it's a, it's a, it is higher than email. Right? I'll just go with that. So, but any suggestions on maybe how to get people more, more engaged in, you know, outside of these tips? Maybe? As far as your officers, your officers, yeah. yeah. Well, uh, some are, some are. How? Is it about how would you get them more engaged? Uh, I think. I think by talking with them and, and making sure that they understand that they set the example for them. So if you want your members to be engaged, then you have to expect that your officers are engaged. So, so I'd start with the officers first. And then I'd look at, can your officers enlist someone to help them? Because then, then you're grooming the next next set of officers that will, will come in line. And, and by that point, you know, you're starting to take up more and more percentage of your, of your, your club. So I think that will be the starting point. How do you motivate people who don't want to work as a team? When you have people, oftentimes if you, if you, if you have somebody that motivation is an issue, maybe you need to have a conversation on what, what is it that they're looking to get out of those things. Mm -hmm. Because if, if you don't have a clear understanding of, of what they want, maybe what you're assuming that they want is not what they want. Or maybe they have a misunderstanding of what Toastmasters has to offer. So I'd start with a one-on-one -on -one conversation and find out what they want to get out of Toastmasters. And then find ways that link, again, you want to link those activities and things to their goals. So if, if they have a particular goal in mind that they want to get out of Toastmasters, so maybe you can find an activity that they want to get I think some of the things that you were saying just now, like you have a member, you have a mentor, as a member, and I've been talking to his mentor, and he says he's really not coachable. So the other thing is though, that perhaps, I'm talking to another member, and he said, you know, let me try. Let me see, maybe a new face, a new approach, might see possibly to get him to
Sorry about that. There's the chicken and the pig thing again. Okay. The way I heard it was to understand the difference between being interested and being committed. Think about bacon and eggs. The chicken is interested. The pig is committed.
one when you club in each area. Uh, if you want to be president's distinguished, you cannot lose any clubs. So if you have five clubs, you can't lose any clubs. Unless you want to add one more club to be president's distinguished. Is this is a big rule? No, there's no big rules in the space. Unless you want to actually work with them, some of very few you know, people get paid. So when folks move from an individual, hey, I'm speaking, become a more confident speaker, delivering information, and they move to a leadership role, I get it. It's different strokes for everybody. You get different things out of it. But for yourself, what are you getting out of this opportunity? Need to sit down. Oh, okay. So okay. should I go someplace else? Because I was going to sit. Go. Oh, but if you want me to video take that's okay. Okay. okay, so since time flies on this thing, I'll just, I'll just start up. So my name is Kim Fields, and I was the TLI Dean of the Summer I Downtown TLI. Now, I want to make sure everyone understands what, knows what a TLI is, the Toastmasters Leadership Institute. This is where any club officer, sometimes the AGs and stuff, go through their training that we have twice a year. Has anyone, has anyone attended the TLI? You're brand new? Excellent. So we have that twice a year. Now, I was the TLI dean, which pretty much means that I was in charge of the how the event entire thing went over. It was a pretty large leadership effort, and I actually spun that into my high-performance leadership project. So it was like kind of two birds with one stone, got to do something great for the district, and then got to have my H HPL credit. So it's a great opportunity for, yeah, I should, should watch, the, gotta watch the acronyms. So as the dean, as you can probably guess, I mean, you're kind of in charge of the entire event, but what I always say is that, you know, no one's an island on this, you've got to have a good team. So if you have a good team of chairs, your education chair, the person who may get your trainers and your breakout session, and they do all the communication with those individuals. You may have a, a 
facilities chair, you make sure all the rooms are set up and you have all the right AV equipment and the rooms are appropriately for what we need to do. And you may have to contact the hotels and have some back and forth on the contract with the hotel to see if it, you know, if it, how it all fits, is it going to meet our needs. And then you may have a registration chair, the person who's going to get everyone registered online. And the key thing is, if you have a great team, then it flows much better because no one person can possibly do this all yourself. But it's a great opportunity for to take a, a leadership role in the, in the district. Like today, you know, Ellen is the, the chair of this entire event today. She so had to work with all of the hotel stuff and she had to make her lunch and dinner. And I didn't have to do that in mine, thank God. But because <laughs> mine was just the evening one downtown. But it's a great opportunity to try the leadership role out. And the one thing they did do recently this year is that TLI deans cannot be deck members. So if you're an area governor, division governor, district governor, they say you got enough going on. It's people who want to go on. Because I was an area governor while trying to plan this. And so I think Joan said, you know, you're more on the people on the deck. So. I chose some people from my club, my Red, Red High Club, who I knew I could trust, and they wanted to step up, but they didn't know how much they wanted to step up. They said, okay, I'll be a chair then. And then I also took people who had just done the June TLI, who said, sure, I'll do it again. It's only you know, three weeks more of doing that, and I knew I could trust them. So the key thing was building that trust, the people that I could say, I need these six things done, and they said, fine, done, got it. And I'm all over this. Or having like a... a Ethel Goatee, who pretty much wrote the book on how to do a TLI. So having her on the team was, was fantastic. I said, I need this, this, this. And she said, Ken, I already know what you need. So she did it all for me. So having a great team like that with people who volunteer who know Toastmasters, and there's tons of them here in the district, it's just a great opportunity to do that. Are there prerequisites to becoming a dean? Like you have to have a certain video completed, or you have to have a certain status in the area of governors? Not that I'm aware. I think that if you volunteer, all the, the, the trio would have to know. Okay, Joan, Michelle, and Don would have to know. And they, they may want to have someone who knows a bit more about the district, maybe. So maybe a former area governor. But one thing you can certainly do is step up as a chair. You can always be one of the chairs on the group and maybe take on TLI you know, next year. I'm not aware of anything, but it's always in the past kind of been the area governor in the past. But if you're gung ho and want to be a TLID, they would just have to say okay, and then interview you and say okay, here's what's going to require. So there is an interview process. They, unless they, you know, unless they know that you know, you're new to the organization and they want to talk to you about it. But I never read anything that says you have to have this, this, and this. So if you've got gung ho and you want to volunteer to do it, I think they'd be ecstatic. So. Okay. Other, any other questions or comments? Anyone ever thought about this? Why would someone want to become a TLI dean? Well, my reasons were that I wanted to help out the district, and Joan asked me nicely, so I said, okay, I'll, I'll give that a whirl. But then again, I also run in and in with my high performance leadership project. So, doing the two things at once, Michelle recommended I. That would be a great opportunity to do that. So it was a way to really learn more about the district, work more with the district, get to know more people in the district. So that part was, and it went over well. So it was, it was, it was a good TLI. So I was happy with that part of it. So I did get to meet it. Volunteers made the made the event go smooth, and it was uh, I couldn't have been more calm that night. So that that says a lot of the planning and, and, the, and the chair stuff went went really well. When I thought it was going to be an absolute panic case, so I was like, everything went, went really well. Yeah. On a certain point, you have to kind of say, okay, now we started. I can only do so much now. I planned as much as I could, but. I think it's a great opportunity and it's a great way to get, if you're not known by the district leadership yet, it's a good way to, to learn and get involved with it. So I think you can watch your surveys and you can take a nap. <laughs>
let's dance.
what did you like? You said you were a club ambassador, is that right? I was. The first year I came in, I went to 51 different Toastmaster clubs. And it helped me out exponentially because before Toastmasters, I could not speak without my paper. That paper was my crutch. I needed to memorize every single thing. And now I can speak more, more fluently and I'm comfortable speaking in front of diverse audiences. So that's what you like best about the ambassador? Well, what I liked best was meeting people like Theo and Melody. These were people who were, he was a DTM, this was a division champion speaker and then made it to third place in the district. I like being around people who, who are doing what I possibly want to do, who can show me how to get there. And it makes the journey is so much easy, easier for you. So that was the best part of it. This time you add more value to yourself because now you're sharing yourself with other individuals besides the 20 people you in your club. So. When you start out, you come in with your own definitions of what's possible. Somebody may say, hey, you can give 10 speeches in three months. They're probably like, no way. I've never given a speech a day in my life in public. But you have somebody you can have to like Melody who loves to talk. And it shows you how to give 10 speeches. It shows you how to craft your message. And Okay, well, if that was the best thing, what was the worst aspect of being a club ambassador? The worst? Well, it cost a lot of money. <laughs> you tried to travel all the time. That's what they tried to travel for. Your yeah, time, your money. time again. It became addictive. I enjoyed it, so I had to set money aside just for Toastmasters. So, you know, I probably needed like a hundred dollars. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.